Welcome once again to Simplify Chemistry section. I want to thank all our viewers, our subscribers. I want to say thank you for supporting us and liking our video. This is the best channel where you can learn chemistry with ease. And I'm sure and I'm so certain also that we will not disappoint you. Today, we want to continue from where we stop, writing of chemical equation and balancing of chemical equation. Before I go further, please don't forget after watching this video to like and to subscribe. To like and to subscribe. If you have any question, go down to the comment section and drop. I will be waiting for your question. Writing of chemical equation and balancing of chemical equation. From the knowledge of what we have been teaching in the previous classes, we are going to transfer the knowledge to this place. The knowledge of valences, the valences of the radicals, the group of elements is going to help us to write a good equation, to help us to write a balanced equation. Up to now, even students in higher institutions find it difficult to write a chemical equation. They find it difficult to balance the equation. But after this video, you will learn the little secrets behind writing of a equation and balancing it. First, we need to know what a chemical equation is. From the definitions and the book, chemical equations, from the definition and the books that you have read, show us the expression of what happens in a chemical reaction. The expression of what happens in a chemical reaction. So, chemical equation is like a shorthand of what has happened in a chemical reaction. It's like a shorthand of what has happened in a chemical reaction. What are the three things you should know when you are writing chemical equation? Number one thing you must know is the coefficient. Coefficient. Number one, you must know the coefficient. You must know reactant. You must know product. You must know what product is. Now, let me explain. What is coefficient? Like the word coefficient. Coefficients are the numbers that follows or come before every element or any element in the reaction. They are the number that comes before or after. So the coefficient helps us to identify the number of atoms in a compound or the number of atoms that is reacting or the number of atoms that is formed. Coefficients enable us to represent the number of moles of the reactants, the number of moles of the products. For example, if calcium is reacting with oxygen to give us calcium oxide as it stands, two and two here, two here is the coefficient the coefficient of this calcium and 2 here is the coefficient is the coefficient of the product form the calcium oxide product form 2 in front is the coefficient there number 2 of your to know is reactant 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 is on the left side of your arrow, they are what are combining together to form products. For example, again, two molecules of calcium plus one molecule of oxygen atom to give you two moles of calcium oxide. Every element at the back of your arrow here are the reactants. This are your reactants. Reactants. Make up of 
two or more compounds or elements and the reactant might be a single compound that breaks down to products that decomposes to products this is your reactant then products product is what is formed after the reactant has combined together so this is products so let me come back again coefficients this is coefficient this is your coefficient this is your product your reactant and this is your product this is coefficient after identifying these three major items after identifying these three major items let's look again the coefficient the reactant the products I come to this side. I said to know facts. What are the things you must know in writing a good chemical equation and balancing it? Good chemical equation and balancing it. Well, chemistry is difficult. Chemistry is that. No. It's based on principles and I want to expose them to you now. Number one, the formula of the reactants and the products in an equation are fixed and cannot be altered at any point not just because you want to balance an equation there alters the chemical formula for you to know how to get a chemical formula visit our previous videos to go and watch so that you can be able to write an equation number two write down the correct formula for each reactant and products and indicate its physical state. I want to dwell a little bit on this. Indicate the physical state. We have various states. We have the solid, which is represented with S in the brackets. We have the liquid, which is represented with L in the brackets. We have the gas or gaseous state. The gas or gaseous state, which is represented with G, we have the aqueous. We have the aqueous, aqueous, which is represented with AQ. These are the physical states of every element. You know, elements they are also a matter. What is matter? Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. And part of the properties of matter is that they have different states. The solid, the liquid, the gaseous, and the aqueous states. Now, number three. Say, do an atom count to check that an equation is balanced. How do we do an atom count? This is the arrow. Reactants, then products. Do the atom count of the various elements on the reactants, which was on the left hand, and check with the number of atoms of the products. Then, when they are equal, means your equation is balanced. Don't forget. You cannot at any point alter your equation, your formula of your reactant or products. They are fixed. So let's go to the business of the day. Let's go to the business of the day. Let's quickly see some common, some common reactions that we have. Some common we have chemical reactions we have. Let's see examples of some common examples of some common chemical reactions some common chemical reactions let's see metal plus oxygen it will give us a metallic oxide metallic oxide Non-metal 
plus oxygen. I want you to go with me. We give us what? Non-metallic oxide. Metal plus a dilute acid. A dilute acid to give us a salt plus hydrogen. A salt plus hydrogen. Let's see metal plus sulfur. We give us what, my class? Give us metallic metallic sulfide. We can also have a non-metal. Okay, let's first deal with this view. Let's quickly see equations on this and let's see how we can balance some of these few equations before we go on. Let's see metal plus oxygen, metallic oxide, non metal plus oxygen to give us non metallic oxide, metal plus dilute acid. Dilute acid is DHL here, abbreviation. Please follow me. Dilute acid to give us salt and hydrogen. To give us salt and hydrogen. Let's quickly see examples on some of these. Let's quickly see example of some of these. Now, let's see. A metal plus oxygen. How do we know metal? Metals are all the electropositive elements. They are the elements that are in group 1, group 2, and group 3 of the periodic table. Remember, I told us how to find group. You can go to our first video. You will see how to know the group, the elements below. Let's quickly see metal plus oxygen. Metal plus oxygen. So, Let's give an example of a metal. Calcium. Calcium plus oxygen. Calcium plus oxygen to give us a metallic oxide. A calcium and oxygen. Metallic oxide. A calcium and oxygen. Then somebody will ask, how? How did they combine? Look at this place. Calcium is in group 2, which is going to be having a valency of 2 plus. Oxygen is in group 6, which is going to be having a valency of minus 2. Because it's a reaction between a cation and anion. Therefore, the subscript 2 of oxygen will be insignificant here. So, exchange of valency plus 2, minus 2, we come over here, then plus 2 here, because of the equal valencies, we divide all through with the common valency, that's how we have calcium oxide, now, the rule said, we cannot change them, let's do what is called atom count, let's do what is called atom count, on the reactant side, how many calcium do we have? Good. One. How many calcium do we have? One. How many atoms of oxygen do we have here? Two atoms. And one atom. On the product side, how many atoms of calcium do we have? One atom of calcium and one atom of oxygen. One atom of calcium and one atom of oxygen. Let's try to make the equation balance. Two oxygen, two air. What you do is very simple. You go up to the side that is deficiency or that is in deficiency. Then you take the number. That's the secret. 
take the number that that one is deficient of. So, oxygen is deficient of two. Because this is a compound, you put the two here. Now, calcium now here becomes two, oxygen here becomes two, which means oxygen is balanced. But calcium is now two here, but one atom here. So, what is calcium here? Deficiency of, is deficiency of two. So, pick these two and put it here again. You pick the two and put it there. So, if you do the atom count, we now have two atoms of calcium, two atoms of oxygen, two atoms of calcium oxide. By this, the equation is balanced. The equation is balanced. Let's try this as our classwork. Let's try this as our classwork. Let's try this as our classwork. Magnesium plus oxygen to give us magnesium to give us magnesium oxide to give us magnesium oxide to give us magnesium oxide. Let's try and work on that. Magnesium plus oxygen to give us magnesium oxide. When you get your answer and the right formula, you can set that across. Let's quickly see that's metal and oxygen. Done. Okay, let's solve this. After attempting, magnesium is Mg, oxygen is O2. Then somebody is asking, Uncle. What is oxygen O2? Oxygen is a gas, number one. Oxygen is diatomic in nature. Oxygen is a gas and it's a diatomic in nature. It's a gas, it's diatomic, meaning two atoms. Now, to give you magnesium oxide. So, magnesium oxide signifies that there is a magnesium and there is an oxygen. Magnesium is a group two. Valency of plus 2, oxygen is minus 2, therefore they cancel out just like the way we did the first one. So, magnesium oxide. Correct equation, formula, but on balance. So, how do we make it balance? The same way we did the first one, what is the deficiency of oxygen here? You put it 2. So this one becomes 2, you put 2 here. Therefore, the equation is balanced. Let's quickly move on. On your own, on your own, try this. On your own, try this. Try this. And send me your answer on the comment section. Try this and send me answer. Aluminium plus oxygen. To give you aluminium oxide. To give you aluminium oxide. To give you aluminium oxide. Aluminium plus oxygen to give you aluminium oxide. Try that on your own. Let's see another common e uh, uh, equations that we see. Non-metal plus oxygen. Non-metal plus oxygen. Non-metals are the groups outside the non-metals, outside the metals, outside the metal, starting from the group 4, group 3, so partially group 3, 4, 5, 6, then the noble gases are the group 8, group 7, the halogens. So what is not metal is a non-metal. What is not a metal is non-metal. Let's see an example of a non-metal. Sulfur plus oxygen. Sulfur plus oxygen to give us sulfur four oxide. Sulfur four oxide. Sulfur four oxide. Sulfur plus oxygen 
to give us sulfur four oxide. Let's try our right equation. Sulfur is S. Oxygen is O2. Then sulfur four oxide. So sulfur and oxygen minus two times two four. Oxygen is O2. So this equation is direct and balanced. This equation is direct and balanced. So I believe you've made attempts on this. And for this section, this is where we are going to be ending the class. Please don't forget to like our videos, subscribe, and drop your comments. Please, you can help us to share our to other students so that they can benefit. I want to welcome you once again and say thank you. Have a nice day.